Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I just realized after filming the last episode that uh, KSP2 is coming out in a month. So um, <laughs> we, we got to get a move on here. No doubt about that. So I want to land on Moho. We're going to get started on that this episode. Guaranteed. This outpost is basically done and I'm a little bit concerned right now about our amount of fuel. I think we probably have enough. But I'm slightly concerned about it, nevertheless. So what I'd like to experiment with, real quick here, is adding a little bit of extra fuel onto each of these side boosters here. So let's go down to this tank here, go into quad symmetry, and put it on something kind of like that. And then, of course, we'd have to uh, redo this strut, which would be fine. Just connect that in right there or so. Cool. So it would be something along the lines of this. What does that make our liftoff thrust to weight? 1.27. That feels low. So, can we get anything with more thrust to weight than this mainsail? Uh, perhaps. What would a vector look like? Let's take a quick look at our mainsails here. So the vectors have a sea level thrust of 936.508 kilonewtons. Okay. And what does the mainsail have again? I've forgotten. Okay, so the mainsail is higher. Does that... Is it the same thrust with the vector being in the larger mode, though? So, in the 2.5 meter mode. I think it's the same thrust. So, I don't think that's going to be super viable. Now, 1.27 is... Functional? It's not ideal in terms of liftoff velocity, right? There's no doubt about that. I want to redo this strut here. I think I don't like the way it's clipping. That's better. Okay. So something along the lines of that. I do think that we now have sufficient fuel. I, I, we, we probably did before, to be honest. But we could strap on some SRBs on the outside here that are intended to assist liftoff. Or we could try it as is. Now we do need some Kerbals in here. And who are we going to bring? Well, we're going to be bringing, uh, let's see here. We need a new, another engineer, actually. So let's go ahead and save this and let's leave. Let's go grab ourselves an engineer. I do think 1.27 is pretty low thrust to weight ratio. We're going to be expending a lot of fuel combating gravity at that point. So that is a concern for sure. Let's hire in an engineer here. How about tan fraud? Cool. There we go. And we'll hop into the VAB. We've got a pilot. We've got tan fraud. That'll be fine. Like I said, though, we need to get a move on here if we're going to land on all of the bodies, except Jewel. That said, a lot of them will be very samey, right? Like the Moons of Jewel, they're going to be very similar sort of landing craft. And this one's based on the Eve one, and future ones will be as well. So that'll be fine. I do think that we should experiment, at the very least, with putting on SRBs out here. This is um, getting very oniony in the way that it's staged, but that's fine. We could toss in, like, Pollux's. So quad Pollux's that we would want to move down like this for decoupling purposes. And then we would grab, if I can actually select it, the radial decoupler. Move this up a bit. In fact, we'd do that in the place tool, probably. So that would be moved up to about here. Thereabouts. That would need to be strutted on, so we would do so about like this. Cool. And then all we would do is we put a nose cone on here. Technically, if we wanted to be really dumb about this, we could use hemispherical fuel tanks as the nose cone and then run fuel through the radial decoupler via enable crossfeed. Or, we disable the crossfeed, 
and just run a fuel duct in like this just to pull out of the hemispherical f liquid fuel tanks first rather than drawing evenly because the solid fuel boosters will definitely definitely burn out for everything else now that's only 0.62 thrust to weight ratio that's to be expected we combine these together 1.53 so that's much better thrust to weight I have no idea what the aerodynamics of this thing will be, but it should be reasonably fine. This is getting increasingly silly looking. There's no doubt about that. And do we actually need the amount of Delta V that we have here? That's an interesting question. We'll evaluate that in flight, I think. But I wanted to bring the extra Delta V because I was a little bit concerned about landing on this tank over Moho, because if we go over to Moho here, we can see that stage one here, where this engine is, we have a thrust to weight of 1.53 when it's full. We have a thousand Delta V. So I wanted to have a little bit extra Delta V. This feels maybe like overkill, but I prefer overkill over underkill, that's for sure. And we don't want to have to do a refueling run the way that we did with the Eve outpost. So maybe this is necessary. That said, a big problem with the EVE outpost was the uh, offset thrust. So I, I don't think we have that problem here. I hope we don't. <laughs> it should be reasonably balanced. In fact, let's detach this here. Uh, we need to go into the build mode. We're going to detach this here. And let's take a look at our center of mass. That looks pretty centered to me. Cool. So we will put this back. No problem there. Excellent. And I think we go ahead and launch this. I want to get a move on. We got to get to Moho. So we're going to be using Casper and Tanfraud here. Fantastic. We've got a uh, large collection of pilots, but otherwise I think this will do. Let's check our staging here. Uh, this will need to be moved up to here. This gets placed there. There we go. And then these fire, all of these fire, the SRBs detach, and then the uh, the center core or the booster stages detach, and then the center booster detaches, and this fires, this fires, parachutes, parachutes. Hang on a moment. We do have these drogue shoots on here still. These can be gotten rid of. We do not need these drogue shoots. Okay. I'm still a little bit concerned about how much Delta V we're going to have for our landing after we, after we deorbit, right? We'll see what the orbital velocity around Moho is. I actually don't know. And that makes eyeballing this difficult. Actually, I'm going to look that up. Let's see here. Moho. I want to point out, this is practically a... Be quiet, freak. Okay. Uh, m just, just to be clear, if you're unaware, the person who was just mentioning things is named Freak. <laughs> Moho Orbital Velocity. Gotta love it when YouTube autoplays things. Fantastic. So what do we got here? Uh, orbital Velocity. That's the actual velocity of Moho. What would our velocity be if we were in orbit? Do do do. Hopefully the wiki does not say. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Uh, we could go for a uh, KSP DV map, and that'll show me what I need to know. So, what do we got here? That's just the wiki. Okay. Updated Delta V map. Perfect. Okay, Moho. Where are we at? 870 looks like. Okay. I think we'll be okay. We'll save and launch this, and we're just going to YOLO it. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Fantastic. Let's go here. Any moment now. You can load in, KSB. I know this is a very complicated craft, but you can do it. Are we going to need to do any adjustments to it? Possibly. 
We'll double check our fuel ducts before we... Oh. Oh. That's not looking so great, is it? Okay. Well, <laughs> we definitely need to revert that back. Some of our struts appear to be partially broken. So, um, this strut here needs to be moved up to over here now because we changed the altitude of this. Got it. And this strut here should probably be up here now. Otherwise, that looks decent. Now, I did not like the amount of bend that we picked up here. So I'm going to put in a set of struts in quad symmetry. Hmm. About like that. Just to shore up that joint a little bit. Okay. Let's put that out on the pad and see how that looks. We should also double check our fuel flow again. But uh, that, that strutting was exciting. Big, big issues there. Cool. So we're loading back in. It'll load up eventually. Any moment now. Do we have... Oh. It's still doing this, huh? Current angle of 98.1 with a target angle of 180 degrees. It's better. No doubt about that. I'm just checking our fuel flow. Our fuel flow looks good. This does not look good, right? In fact, this looks quite bad. So we'll revert that back. Perhaps we need a second strut on there just to hold that. So that would end up being like a strut, say, here. And then another strut over here. Something about like that. Maybe that'll hold it together. Also, this strut here looks a little bit broken. That could be part of the problem. So we'll connect that strut in like so. I'm going to redo these as well, just to make sure they're not actually connected to the hinge. To be something a little bit more like that. Okay, let's put that out on the pad and see if that's good. Assuming that we're strutted together appropriately, this should be ready to lift off. Hopefully. <laughs> it's interesting that we were only having the issue on the one side. So it was, I guess, overwhelming the strut. That looks much better. I think it was this strut, actually, that was breaking it. But it's fine. We can have two here just to help hold that. Checking in on the hinge here. Perfect. That's exactly where we wanted it to be. We're not, like, slowly rotating sideways. That's a good sign as well. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and we're heading off to Moho. Now, it's a little bit awkward here. Yeah, it's, it's a little confused in the Delta V. Okay, that's fine. So, I think we're ready to go. We're only going to have 36 seconds of burn here. I'm going to pin this open just to make sure that these dra these tanks drain before the SRBs do. They should. I believe that they will. But let's double check that. And off we go. Oh yeah, they're already drained. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Cool. So we're just going straight up for right now. And that's absolutely what we want here. Okay, now I'm going to start a small gravity turn. Very small. We're just going to park here. 
and head to program. Okay. This burn time is not going down as rapidly as I expected. That's intriguing. That's very intriguing, actually. And we're a little bit off on our trajectory here, so I'm pulling us down slightly. SRBs are still a going. And we're mostly trying to go up here, but we're going to need to park on prograde pretty soon here. This is an extremely heavy lift rocket, right? There's no doubt about that. So we're going to run out of fuel in these SRBs soon. Which is fine. That's entirely expected. Allegedly five seconds, but it's going to be longer than that. Two. One. Okay. Clean detach. That's good. The next question is, how does this detach go? As long as we're locked to prograde, it should be reasonably fine. That said, look at that apoapsis height. That's looking good. So we're going to push this up to about 100, uh, maybe like 120 kilometers. We just hopped into orbital mode. Okay. Actually, let's just go ahead and take this over to the horizon at this point. We need a lot more horizontal speed now. We know that for a fact. So we're going to burn at the horizon here. Time to apoapsis is holding. Okay, now it's going up. So we know we're reasonably fine here. I'm going to burn this to 120. There we go. We'll hold here. And we should be reasonably safe at this point. So at this apoapsis, we are going to need a lot of delta V, right? In order to get ourselves into orbit. We knew that. We went very heavily vertical. So it'll be something along the lines of this. And we can lock to the maneuver node. We can now extend one of these solar panels just to give our, ourselves some additional power. Not that we really need it. Cool. And this is definitely going to be a lot of Delta V. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We've got quite a lot left over. So that's good. But this is a very heavy load, right? A very, very heavy load. So we're going to start this burn in about one minute. We'll go ahead and warp. We are coasting for the time being. 20 seconds. Three, two, one, mark. And this is going to be a minute and a half burn with all of this going. That's kind of insane. Cool. So this is looking reasonable. What's a little less reasonable, though, is... Okay. The amount of shake that we had building up there. I was concerned about that detachment. I was very concerned about it. But it went clean, so that's fine. We carried a little extra weight because I was concerned and let the oscillation die down a bit there, but I think that's worthwhile. Better to lose a little bit of Delta V to that than to lose this engine, right? <laughs> that would have been catastrophic if we had lost this engine. Cool. So we're entering orbit here. The question is just how much do we actually need to get to Moho? Are we going to need a refueling run? Maybe. If we do, that's fine. We can get fuel there. But the question is when. We've got around 3,000 Delta V left. I think that'll be enough. Just uh, consulting the map here real quick. 1540, 350. Okay. Uh, this is good enough. This orbit's fine. Okay, 
Once again, I'm consulting the Delta V map here. I'm not used to going to Moho, so let's just take a real quick look here. Do, do, do. I always forget where it is in this. There it is. Okay, so 760-2410 and 870. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. So we definitely need a gravity assist. Uh, should we bring up more fuel right now before we leave low orbit? Probably is the answer. So, realistically, we could refuel this guy. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be... I'm not going to revert this. What am I doing? Space Center. Okay. I, I think that's going to be a reasonably good call to refuel now. It's going to be easier to do it now than it is later. And we know it's going to be tight to get there. If we refuel now, it should be fine. So all we need to do is send up our refueling probe, right? That'll attach on. And we'll transfer over as much fuel as we can. We're not trying to make it symmetrical this time. So we just grab on. Let's go ahead and open up our refueling machine, which is in here somewhere. Yeah, the fuel delivery machine. There it is. Now, one thing that we know that we need. A, we do not need this advanced grabbing unit. B, we do not need this decoupler. We can get rid of that and save some weight and some money. C, I believe we don't need this decoupler either. So we just deliver it like this. We probably don't need this fuel tank. Realistically. So we deliver it along the lines of this. Now, I do want to toss in some RCS on here to make, to make linking up a little bit easier. So we'll toss in something like... Didn't grab this. Okay. We'll toss in something like this. There we go. So this is going to be much lighter. We're going to deliver a lot more fuel, in theory. Well, not as much fuel, actually. We know that we need roughly this tank plus some of this, right? But that should be fine. We'll have, I think, more than that when we get there. So let's go ahead and save this and launch this. This is a scaled back version of our fuel delivery machine. We still have the quad boosters, so we're going to have a lot of fuel when we get there. Like, a whole lot of fuel. This is so much lighter than our previous lift. Do we even need the quad boosters? Probably not, is the answer. But let's get this thing docked up. Any moment now. Okay. What is our thrust to weight? 1.53. Okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So we'll throttle up. SAS on. And off we go for the second time. Beautiful. And the entire point of this is just to deliver fuel. Now, having it attached will cause some offset thrust, right? That's definitely going to be a thing. So we're a little bit concerned about that. We don't... And that's the reason why I didn't want to bring too much fuel. Okay, let's go ahead and lock that to prograde. Cool. And up we go. We've got quite a lot of burn left here, and we'll punch through this atmosphere pretty quickly. Pretty quickly indeed. But we just want to transfer fuel in and then detach. We don't want this to remain attached, necessarily. You know, if I had realized that we would be doing this, I probably would have had the top tank be empty when we lifted it off. And that would have saved us a lot of weight. But for the time being, this is fine. Okay. So we're just going to target around 70 kilometers here. I'm going to... Actually, we do need to be on prograde, don't we? We do. Because we're going to run out of burn here pretty soon. Um, we'll target something like that. Okay. 
So we're going to need a lot of horizontal speed, right? That's definitely a thing that we're going to need, but that's fine. This will happen once we are in space. In theory. And we can push it out to be something kind of like this, although that is timed poorly. There we go. That's timed a little bit better. A little bit. Emphasis on the little. Okay, sure. That'll do. So we'll go ahead and head out to that particular location. How are we doing on our battery power? Oh, we're fine. Yeah, this contract was canceled. We did that deliberately. And we're slowly trying to rotate this thing on over. Very slowly. Start burn in 10. Okay, we're going to start a very gentle burn here just to rotate here. Okay. There we go. Cool. So we are in vacuum now, and we shouldn't have a problem with this detachment. So we're going to run out of these side boosters, basically, well, in about five seconds here. Three, two, one, mark. That was what we wanted to avoid previously. That We had that oscillation going there, and, well... That pretty much means that this flight needs to be terminated and done again. <laughs> Gross. I don't know why we're picking up that oscillation in that burn. It's very strange to me. I was hoping it would isolate out, but it didn't. Yeah, that's definitely interesting. Well, this is now wasted, unfortunately. So we're going to have to head back to the Space Center. And we're going to have to do it again. It was expensive, and that hurts. No doubt about it. But it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to have this guy head on up and refuel our Moho mission. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. That oscillation absolutely sucked. No doubt about that. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including Casserol, ALS Gamer, Kentuin, James, Shadowwolf, Mlohan80, Kentogen, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Unisol, Kadra, Rogue Corvid, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.